We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. Uh oh, thrift diving. Hey, what's up? It's Serena Pia from thriftdiving.com, which is a do it yourself blog, YouTube channel, and podcast that helps you decorate, improve, and maintain your home with paint, power tools, and thrift stores without sacrificing your budget, the environment, or style. Welcome to episode 116 of the Thrift Diving Podcast. And today, we're going to talk about a new project that I just started. I am building a small 8x4 deck on the front of my she shed. It has taken so long to get to this point. I'm pretty sure that I ordered my shed in 2021 and it's now 2023. So that means for almost two years, I think it's been almost two years, I literally have been stepping on a, like, what do you call it? One of those uh, crates, not a crate. I can't think of the name of it, but a pallet. That's what it is, a pallet. I have been using a pallet to step into my shed because to step into it, it's a good 12 inches. And so you don't want to put that strain on your knees every single day when you're coming in and going out. It's a lot. It's a lot. And so even just going up and down off of the pallet, it's kind of dangerous because I never put additional wood slats on top. And so today we're going to talk about why in the world it took me so long to get started on this project. And, you know, I had to go back and review episode 109. I was talking about the seven reasons why we can't get started on projects, right? Like, what are those seven reasons why you want to do a DIY project, but for some reason you keep finding yourself just procrastinating. You know that you need to do this and you've come into all these reasons why you can't do it and you're procrastinating. You just you just struggle to get started. And I started listening to episode 109 because when I identified that I was having this problem with getting started on this project, I said, you know, let me go back and actually listen to episode 109 and let me see what the reasons are that I had stated. And let me identify those reasons of the seven that are the reasons why I have been kind of delayed on getting started on this project. And I'll let you know that I actually did start this deck the, let's see, what is it today? I'm recording this as of Sunday evening. And I actually got started on Thursday. And I worked on it all day Thursday. I'm still not done. Still not done. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But I started thinking about this because I struggled a lot with this project. Remember, like I said, it took me almost two years to get started on even attempting this. And then even though I started it on Thursday, I didn't have time on Friday. Friday was pretty much busy all day, but I had all day yesterday and all day today. I had literally all weekend to work on this project and it still just sat there. And I started to think, you know, Serena, there's something to this. (laughs) Not only have you been procrastinating for two years on getting started, but you've also been procrastinating once you started the project. And I thought that there would be some value in talking about this because you might be struggling with a project too. And if there's something that you get out of this that maybe makes you feel a little bit better about the procrastination you've been doing on your own project, then this episode is worth it. And I'm glad that you were listening. So let me take a step back and tell you about this project. Now, I was one day scrolling through Facebook and of course, everything in your feed is an advertisement, right? And sometimes the algorithm gets it right. Well, on this particular day, I happened to see an advertisement for this product called Tough Block. And I thought, whoa, wait a minute, I can actually build a small deck and not have to dig below the frost line. (laughs) This seems like it's going to be the solution to the problem that I've had. Because, you know, I knew that in order for me to build a deck, And I say a deck, you know, when you think about a deck, you're probably thinking of like this big, massive thing. My shed is 16 by 26. I don't need a huge porch slash deck. I just need something that's big enough to accommodate the double door that I have and maybe a little bit of extra extending out so I could put some planters, maybe even, I don't know, a small chair or something there. And I I wanted to build this for a long time, but in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, well, all right, am I going to have to get a permit for this? The county I live in, if it's attached, it's going to need a permit. And 
going through that permit process of even just getting my shed, it was kind of a nightmare. <laughs> they kept coming back and kicking the the permit application back to me. And I just, I just didn't want to go through all that. So that was one of my holdups. And then the other thing was when you build a deck that is attached to your home or to your shed, depending on where you live, you're going to have to dig down below the frost line. And here in Montgomery County, Maryland, where I live, it's, I want to say it's 30 inches. You've got to go down at least 30 inches. And I do have tools, you know, I do have this really cool auger that's probably, I would say it's probably heavy duty enough that it could dig down that far. But, you know, my fear was, what if I don't align things properly? Or what, you know, I know how to do framing. I've never built a deck before, but I did take a deck building class. So, you know, I I have some experience in seeing it being done. Um, But I also just felt just really uncomfortable with being able to get everything to add up properly, right? Like a deck, you're stepping on a deck. You may have multiple people stepping on a deck. That's not something that you want to sway or break under the pressure of, of what, whatever it is that you're putting onto this deck, right? Especially if you've got like a tall deck, that means somebody can actually get injured. And I didn't want that to happen. So I figured, all right, well, let me just get a quote for having somebody come and do some concrete stairs, maybe even do like a concrete, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like something that would gradually slope away from the building to the house. Well, he quoted me $5,000 and I just didn't want to pay $5,000 to have somebody come in and do something concrete based. Although I loved his concept but I really just wanted a simple deck. I didn't want anything where I could wheel things into the shed. I don't, I don't, for the most part, that's not how I've been using my shed. If I do take things out into the yard in front of the shed, they're lightweight things that I can just carry. I don't need to have a ramp. And that wasn't really that important to me. So I just really want a small deck with maybe a step. That's it. And when I was scrolling Facebook, I saw this product that I thought, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that I'm part of this algorithm. Because when I looked at the videos and went to the YouTube, went to their YouTube videos, I went to their marketing page and I found out that Tough Block, it's now I know that I'm talking to you here and you can't visualize this. You'll see it in the video because I will have a video of the entire deck build on my YouTube channel. So stay tuned for that. But just imagine it's this wide piece of plastic that's recycled plastic. They're black and it's got this little area in the center of it that can handle a four by four, which is actually three and a half by three and a half. You probably already know that, but it can handle a four by four post. It can handle um, the way that they have it structured. It can handle like a two by four, a two by six. So whatever you're building your deck out of, which oftentimes, you know, a small low ground, a a small deck to the ground, you wouldn't need anything more than a four by four. Now, if you're building a a large deck, you're going to have larger six by six posts. But this is something just a small deck that's just low to the ground. There's a little bit of a slant from my shed, uh, you know, just for the water to escape so it doesn't, you know, pull around. But this is something that I could I think I could do, I could use these. And so I ordered two, I probably could have reached out to them and said, Hey, I'm a YouTuber, send me a few. But I was like, no, I just want to order this and just get started. And I did. So I ordered two sets. I think I paid about $160 total for these deck blocks or tough blocks is what they're called. And I let them sit there for probably a month. (laughs) Have you ever done that where you've ordered things and you know you're going to use them, but again, you're still procrastinating? So anyway, I I decided this past week to get started on this. And Tough Block, they actually have some really good videos on their YouTube channel. So I dug into one of them that showed how to do a deck when your, your slope is sort of like what my slope is right outside of my shed, where you've got a gradual slope that's going away from the building. So how do you build an even deck so that you're able to, uh, you know, have a little bit of a slope, have the water going away from the building, but how can, how do you do this using tough, tough, can't speak, tough block. (laughs) 
<laughs> I love how I trip myself up sometimes. And we don't edit here at Thrift Diving. I don't have time to edit. Okay, so anyway, this was the idea. I watched the video and I took notes. And that was actually one of the things that I mentioned in episode 109, is that when you're doing um, the preparation for a project and it's overwhelming, the best thing to do is to take step-by-step -step notes of what you need to do. And sometimes it's pretty simple because you'll find a, a project that's very similar to what you want to do, or maybe it's the exact same project that you want to do. It's easy to look at that and say, okay, let me watch this word for word. I'm going to kind of note down all the materials I need, the most salient steps. Well, maybe not word for word, but sometimes word for word, because it might make a difference in the materials that you buy, the steps that you do. And it's great when you've got that research and you've written everything down. So I did actually did that. That was one of the things I recommended in episode 109 is to document the process. And when you see your project in step-by-step -step fashion, it really makes it easier to jump into it. Now, there's still some hesitation because it's a project that you, you've never done before. This deck, I've never done this before. Will I succeed? Yes. Will I do it perfectly? Definitely not. <laughs> I can tell you right now, I will make some mistakes. But having everything written out for me and I printed it out, I can just check it off as I go. So the first step that I did, and this, let me just back up and say, that is one of the strategies that I usually recommend is to write step by step. And that gives you something to look at and feel like you've made some progress. So, you know, the first step could be just pulling out the materials. And when you're getting started on a project, the best thing to do is to write down everything that you think you'll need. Sometimes you don't even realize what it is that you need until you sit down and just draft a list of it. And so that's what I did. So the very first step of this step-by-step -step instructions that I wrote was to gather all the materials. So the things that I needed, I went to Home Depot, I got the four by four posts, I got the two by sixes. I wasn't quite sure if I got enough of the materials, but I think that I did. I, I ended up having to do two trips because I have a minivan, which has a lot of space. The only problem is that I can't fit everything in with the seats. And if you've ever taken seats out of a minivan, it's a pain in the butt. You don't want to do it. <laughs> so whatever I can shove down the center aisle of my minivan, that's all I'm hauling home, baby. I'm not getting anything else in, in that van at the time. So having a material list really did help me move forward a little bit because I, I could check off those boxes and get all those materials and then get home and decide, okay, what else do I need? So I literally did shop my home. I went through, I had the list, I checked things off. And as I brought them into my she shed, I had a table. There's a table my mom had given me some number of years ago. It's one of those little tables, like the plastic tables that you can fold up and it's got a handle. If you don't have one of those, definitely get one of those. It's very helpful when you're working on projects to be able to lay out all of your materials and tools, especially if you're working outdoors. Sometimes you can lose them in the grass. So if you have a table to sit them on, one you can just fold up, it's great to have. And I went through my house, my garage, my she shed, got all the materials and I laid them out. And once that was done, then it was time to move on to step one. And step one <laughs> was very, very labor intensive. I actually had to clear the grass in front of my shed. Now, if you remember in a recent episode, I was telling you about some of the, uh, what do you call them? The clover mites that were infiltrating my shed. Well, thankfully they were only here for about two weeks, three weeks max, but they were about here two or three weeks and now they're gone. Thank God. You'll see that in an upcoming video as well. But one of the things I needed to do for that to get rid of the, the clover mites was to remove any sort of weeds around my shed. And so since I was going to be building this deck, I knew that I was going to have to clear an eight by four foot anyway. So I did that several weeks ago. So I made progress and then I just stopped <laughs> for fear. But I cleared that whole area. And then this weekend, or Thursday rather, this week when I was ready to get started, it was time to move on to the first step. And I kept, let me tell you what I did. It was so funny because since I had already cleared that area 
probably about a month ago, there were weeds that were already starting to grow in that eight by four area, right? So even though I cleared it in preparation, then there was this lull in activity and then the weeds started. So on Wednesday, this was Wednesday before I actually started the project, the the weeds, I was like, well, I got to kill these weeds. So I brought out some weed killer that I'd gotten from Costco, uh, a gentle weed killer, I might add. <laughs> and as I'm spraying the weeds, I'm like, well, you know, I've got some weeds in my fire pit and in my walkway. I guess maybe while I'm spraying, I should go ahead and spray those too. So it ended up turning into a, well, I'm supposed to be working on this deck, but it turned into, hey, I'm going to spray the weeds. It's so funny because I came into the house and my husband's like, oh, did you did you build your deck? I'm like, are you kidding me? You think I'm going to get it done in two hours? No, I've been spraying weeds. <laughs> and he says, why are you spraying weeds? Like you said you were going to build the deck. I'm like, I know. And so I felt myself procrastinating during that day on Wednesday. Well, when Thursday came, I said, I, I have to get to this. So by then, the weeds that I'd sprayed around that four by eight area was they were dead and I needed to do two trenched areas. I didn't really know how far down I had to go, but I knew based on the research that I'd done that I needed to do a trench because I was going to be filling that in with some paver base. I was going to put some gravel there and that's where the tough blocks are going to sit on and they have to be level and even. Now keep in mind, we had, we had like beautiful 85 degree weather. There was no humidity, but there was a lot of sun and so as I'm digging out this, you can actually see it if you go to my Instagram, I believe I posted it there. And as I'm digging out these trenches, I'm literally drenched in sweat. Like it was, it was so bad. And I had to stop several times, drink water, take a break. Because, you know, when you're working outside, somebody actually warned me of this on my Facebook page. When you're working outside and you're in these conditions, you think that you have the energy to keep going. But when it's hot and you're sweating that way, please be careful. And I had to remind myself of this too, like, okay, Serena, you think you have the energy to keep going. But at any time, you could start really feeling the effects of heat exhaustion and I or heat, heat stroke, and I didn't want that to happen. So that day, I didn't get the only thing that I got done <laughs> was I, I did two trenches. I filled those in with, uh, well, I've I did cover those with some weed block fabric, right? Because you don't want weeds growing up underneath of your your deck. And then I filled them in with paver base. I tamped that down with a tamper. And then once I tamped that down, then I poured some, uh, well, in the video, it said to use road-based gravel. I couldn't find it anywhere. Big box stores don't have road-based gravel. But I did find the answer that I was looking for when I reached out to Tough Brick or Tough Block and they said, yeah, you can use all purpose gravel, that's fine. And so that's all I got done. I didn't even, for when I put down the Tough Blocks, I didn't even set them into place properly. I just, I was just done that Thursday. <laughs> and then Friday, as I mentioned, I was pretty busy and I said, I'll get, I'll get started again on Saturday. I've got all weekend, my son doesn't have soccer. I will get this thing done this weekend, gotcha. Well, today's Sunday night, and I didn't touch it this weekend. And that's what got me thinking about this project and how I had all this time all weekend. There was really nothing standing in my way, but I had a hard time motivating myself to get out there. The weather was good. It wasn't quite as hot as it was on Thursday, but I had a hard time motivating myself to get out there and work on it again. And I, I became stalled. And I just started thinking, you know what? If I'm going through this, you're probably going through this too. And I wanted to go back and kind of revisit some of these strategies and reasons. And But I'll tell you my reason. My reason is because I am so afraid that this deck is not going to turn out. That I will follow the instructions <laughs> because as I mentioned, they had really good instructions on the Tough Block uh, webpage on their YouTube channel and on the, on the, and on their site too. But I'm so afraid that it's not going to turn out that there's something that I'm going to do that's going to require me to pull it all apart and start over. Whether I'm not properly uh, leveling the blocks or, you know, maybe I waste my materials because I cut, I cut it wrong and I, I don't account for 
this width or this length and I mess up. And so because of that fear, it really kind of stopped me from doing anything this weekend. Because in my mind, I'm like, well, what if I don't level these tough blocks properly? And then when I go to put my my joist in there, what if I can't get the other rim joists to be like properly aligned? Or like, what if it's just, when? what if I build it and I go to step on it and it's real wonky and it's like shaking and it wants to fall apart? Like, these are the things that I tell myself. And it got me thinking about the fact that you probably have a lot of these insecurities in your mind as well before you start a project. And even if you started the project, those insecurities don't go away the minute you start the project. They're always there because it's a new project. You've never done it before. You don't know how it's going to turn out. Now, when I think back to other projects that I've done, I've had that same fear, right? Like I was telling you before in episode 109, I built a closet organizer from scratch. And and here it is, what, two years later? It hasn't fallen down. So, you know, I have enough evidence to know that, okay, I can persevere through a challenge and it will turn out, it will be fine. When I built my vanity, I built my bathroom vanity several years ago. And the huge fear that I had was this thing is going to fall down. Once you put a piece of granite on it, it's just going to collapse. And guess what? It didn't collapse. (laughs) Now, is it perfect? No, not at all because it's the first vanity that I ever built, but it's still standing. I think it was 2017, actually, that I redid my master bathroom. So that's 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, six years, had to count on my fingers. That's six years. And in that six years, there's no part of that vanity that's bowing, breaking, cracking, everything is fine. So, you know, and here's the thing, when I was having those anxieties back when, when I was building this, And I said to my husband, well, what if it, what if it breaks? He's like, well, just rebuild it. I was like, oh, you know, that's a great idea. (laughs) That's, that's perfect. Why am I getting so, uh, so like worried about this? So the same thing can be true of this deck that I'm building or the project that you're working on. If you are afraid of what the outcome is going to be for this particular step, or maybe the entire project. Maybe you paint something and you're like, oh, but what if it doesn't look good? Well, guess what? Repaint it. I mean, all you have to do is go over it again with another paintbrush and another color. That's it. Problem solved. And with me, you know, once I move forward on the next part, which is making sure that each of the tough blocks are leveled, then it's just a matter of putting in the the joists and screwing them together and putting on the joist hangers. I mean, I've never done joist hangers, but it's pretty simple, looks pretty simple to do. And if I make a mistake, guess what? I can actually pull it off and put another nail in there. (laughs) That's it. So, you know, when we think about the fact that the world is not going to end if this project doesn't turn out exactly as expected, I think it does give you permission to move forward, right? And I still do have that fear of, okay, what if I build this? And I go to step on it and it's shaky, it's wonky. Well, why do you feel that way, Serena? Because you've put the paver base in there. You've been following the instructions. There's nothing that you've done that's so far from what tough brick, I keep saying tough brick, (laughs) tough block. I don't know why I want to say tough brick. That sounds pretty good too, tough brick. But you know what I'm talking about. I don't know why I feel that if I do it as exactly they've specified in their tutorials that I'll get significantly different results. Like that doesn't really make sense. So I think sometimes it's just our brain that's playing tricks on us. So here's what I'm doing. In addition to the handwritten notes, I'm also setting a deadline. Because if I have a deadline and I had not set a deadline, which is why I was able to waste this Saturday and Sunday. But as I was talking to you and preparing for this episode, and realizing that, Serena, you kind of missed setting a deadline, I realized I need that deadline. So my deadline is this Friday. That deck has to be done by Friday. And so knowing that I have to be done by Friday is going to hopefully spark me to move a little faster tomorrow. It's Monday. I don't know. There's something about my weekends where I just want to relax. I don't know if it's 
just, you know, the fact that I'm getting older, I mean, I'm 45, I'm not old, but I really enjoy laying in bed, watching Netflix, working on my knitting projects, and just spending the weekend relaxing. Saturday, we went to the pool, took the kids to the pool. It was a spur of the moment decision because again, I was going to work on the deck, but the weather was so nice. I said to the kids, you know what? We're going to go to the pool. And I had great family time, but I didn't have that deadline. But if I had that deadline, I probably would have at least gotten started on the next part of the project today instead of wasting today. Although I will tell you, I did work on some fun knitting projects, which did make me happy. So, (laughs) I mean, it is about being happy, right? So as long as you're happy. So that's one thing that I'm doing differently is that I'm going to set that deadline for Friday and knowing that I've got a lot of things going on this week that I need to get done, but squeezing in that time to make sure that I'm working on this project. And then, you know, part of the prod, part of the problem that people have is that they don't actually create time to work on the project. And so this is something that I've been implementing for, I guess, the last week. I've been time blocking, and I did mention this in episode 109 as a strategy. What I like to do, according to the book that I told you about, it's called Start Finishing, How to Go from uh, Start to Finish, I think is what it's called. I will leave a link down below in the show notes. It's a great book. But what he recommends, the author, is you have to have time blocking. You have to know what your projects are. And you really don't want to have more than three to five projects, right? And anything that takes time, attention, and focus is a project. So it could be your health. Your health could be a project. You losing weight is a project. Maybe your relationship is a project because it's taking time, attention, and focus. Maybe getting your kid off to college is a project. And so you really don't want to have more than three pro- three to five projects at a time. Well, this deck is a project and I've got my, my weight training for, you know, that's been a project for me. So I do have these projects. And what you do is when you time block, you actually take parts of these projects And you put it into the time that you have already specified. So typically for me during the day, during a a normal work day, I will, I would say, probably get started about 10 o'clock, right? So like 10 to 12 is two hours of time block that I, that I have dedicated for my project, whatever that project is for the day. And then I'll have lunch, check email, and then let's say from one to three, that's another two hour time block. And what I found is that when I actually create this schedule, I get so much done. It is fantastic. It's almost like my current, like the current Serena is telling the future Serena, look, girlfriend, I know you're going to waste your time. So let's go ahead and just make this schedule. (laughs) Because I don't trust you. I don't trust that you are going to do what's in your best interest. So the Serena from the past, or I should say the present, knows that future Serena is going to play games on her phone, chat with people online, knit, watch Netflix and do all these other fun things. And she's not going to get her stuff done. But when I time block, I'm more likely to get it done. So that's one strategy that I'm using. So if you're working on a project, if you've got something that you want to work on right now, you may not have to do like a full time block of your entire day. But you can say, look, from one to two today, I'm going to do that thing that that project that I've really been wanting to, that I've really been wanting to work on, I'm going to work on it. And yes, it's overwhelming. But remember, going back to that first thing that I said, is taking step by step instructions and writing them down. You know, even if it's just a list that you're jotting down in a notebook, you know, just a handwritten thing doesn't have to be typed up or anything like fancy have something written down that says, okay, here's the first thing that I need to do. I need to go gather these materials. I know I have them all here, but I have to gather them up and I'm going to put them in like this room or I'm going to set them out on the patio or wherever it is that you're working on your projects. That right there can just be your one to two time block. And you know that that's the task that you're going to do. So when I do that, when I am hard on myself, and I don't want to say hard, when I am strategic with how I want to spend my time and I'm intentional, I get so much more done. And, you know, this weekend I tried to be intentional (laughs) and set a schedule for myself. It's a little harder on the weekends, especially when there's like nice weather and the kids are saying, mommy, let's go to the pool. Yeah. Who can, who can deny that? 
Come on. In fact, I started this really good book by, uh, what is her name? Oh, Octavia Butler. I started this a book called Fledgling, and it's about a vampire, this little girl that wakes up and she's a vampire. Like, it's, it's kind of cool. Like, it's a little different than things that I normally read, and I'm really enjoying it. So I sat by the pool for three hours and just read. It was so great. It was great. <laughs> but again, future Serena doesn't really stick to the rules of what she's supposed to do unless she's got a schedule. All right. So those are just some strategies that you can do. Get the handwritten notes, type it up, make a list or, you know, a checkbox of the things that you have to get done, the materials that you need to buy, that you need to gather up, and then just start checking things off. And you'd be surprised how much progress you actually make. And then set that deadline. That's what I'm going to do this Friday. And then have a have a schedule, have a schedule and know exactly what you're going to do and when you're going to do it and try to stick to that. You know, it was really funny because when I started with this schedule, there were some things I needed to do outside. I needed to pressure wash my patio. My, pa- my patio is horrible. Every like season, it just, it looks really bad. It gets a lot of mold. I don't think we get a lot of sunlight back there. And so there's a lot of moss that grows on there and you've got to pressure wash it off. And it's just a lot of work. Well, on this particular day, I had already created my schedule. I think I, ske- I think I actually scheduled it the day before. So I knew from like one to three that I was actually, no, not even just one to three, from 10 to 12 and from one to three, I was going to be pressure washing. And so <laughs> when I sat down to look at my schedule, I did not feel like pressure washing. I just wanted to sit in my shed, maybe write a blog post, check some email, do something light for that day. And I looked at the schedule and it said pressure washing. I was like, oh my gosh, really? But you know what I did? I, I set aside my feelings of what do I want to do? And I actually did what I said I was going to do. And it was a very powerful moment where I could have said, no, nah, you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to choose to do something else, but I didn't. And so by the end of the day, I felt really good, not just because the patio was clean and it looked better, but I felt really good because I was able to say ahead of time what I was going to spend my time on. And I actually followed through no matter if I felt like it or not. Because I think, you know, a lot of things in life that we really want, if we just depend on what we feel like doing, there's probably not a lot of things that we're going to achieve. <laughs> I mean, if you think about like Michael Jordan, for example, um, or one of these great athletes or basketball players, or not, it's not just basketball, but just athletes in general, you know how many days they get up and they don't feel like working out, they don't feel like going to the gym, shooting a thousand three, three, three throws or three throws, three pointers. I'm trying to say three pointers and free throws. <laughs> I love how I trip myself up sometimes. But just imagine how many days they actually felt like getting up and doing that probably most days, but there's days when they didn't want to. And they did it because that's their schedule. That's what they committed themselves to. And even for myself, you know, when I wake up every morning, there's mornings, most mornings where I want to go for my walk, I want to go for my run, I want to run five miles. There's not very many mornings where I say I don't want to. But on the weekends, I still work out on the weekends. And I'm more likely to get up on the weekend and say, no, I don't really feel like going to the gym to lift weights today. But I don't go by what I feel like doing. I do it because I know that's my schedule. And I know that's what I've I've set for myself. Like that's something that it's going to be very hard to break that. There's not going to be very many things that could break that. And if we get into that same mindset with our projects and we tell ourselves, look, I've got this Saturday and Sunday, I am going to work on it from one to four. That's it. And if I get to four o'clock and I want to continue, great. But if I don't, then that's fine because I know that I did what I said I was going to do, I was going to show up from one to four. And I think sometimes I do lack that discipline with myself. But the times when I do exhibit it, I see how much better I feel. I see how much more I get done. I see how much more committed I am to finishing things. And so I'm going to invite you to do the same thing. 
you know, set a schedule for yourself, time block. If you want to go back and listen to, I believe it's episode two of the Thrift Diving Podcast, I will leave an episode link down below so that you can listen to that. Learn how to time block so that you can create time for your projects. And then when you do have that fear that comes up, even though you've carved out one to three, you have that fear, it's not going to turn out. You can do some of these strategies. You can write down the step by step. You can make sure that you're, you know, pulling everything out into a de- de- designated space for your tools so that when you're ready to get started, there it is. You don't have to go and hunt everything down. I think if we just think about these things and use these strategies and not be so fearful and not be so afraid to fail, then we can move our projects forward. I know how I feel when I work on a project. Like when I got done on Thursday, I felt so good. I was covered in sweat. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. I hurt. I was hot. But I felt so good emotionally because I had I had done what I said I was going to do. I said, I'm going to work on this project today and I'm going to make as much progress as possible. And I felt so good at the end of the day. So it really makes you feel uplifting when you are able to do what you said you were going to do. It makes you feel good, makes you want to continue. But then of course, those fears, those doubts start to come in and really interferes with your ability to be productive. But I want you to know, I want you to know this is normal. I feel this and I've, and if I've been doing projects for as long as I have, and I still feel this way, just imagine how you might feel. You might have only been starting for like the last six months, the last three months of doing projects. (laughs) So that's why I wanted to talk about this because I wanted you to feel like it's okay to have these feelings. But I also wanted you to know that we, we still have to work through them. We can't let our fear dictate whether or not we continue to work on a project or really do anything in our life. Because fear and doubt about what's going to happen, it's always going to be there. It's how you move forward. Once you identify that, yep, I'm feeling this way. What are some things I can do? Well, I can, I can set a deadline and hold myself to it. You might even, you might even reward yourself and say, well, if I get this deck built by Friday, I'm going to treat myself to a massage. Hello. (laughs) I would definitely, you know, I think that's a great idea, actually. Mm. Okay, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I am going to hold myself to it. I am going to go and get a massage, a nice massage. I'm not talking about the one at the mall where you're fully clothed, laying next to, you know, five or six people. I'm talking about enclosed in a room where it's just you and the massage therapist and you just get to relax for an hour. That is what I'm going to do. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I feel like you just helped me create a new strategy, (laughs) rewarding myself for getting projects done. So what rewards do you want? Is there something that you've been wanting? Is there maybe some new pillows or maybe, I don't know, like a treat that you've been wanting that you could tie it to a project and you making progress? What treat would that be for yourself? What thing would you treat yourself to? if you get your project project done. All right. So that's what I have for you today. I just want you to feel like you're not alone. I still struggle with this all the time whenever I start a new project. And honestly, even when it's a project that I've done before, sometimes it's just starting a new project. I told you that I've got to create a friend of mine who owns a business. He does some construction work, like fine carpentry type things for people. But he also does some engraving projects. He's got like this really nice, I think it was like a ten to $12,000 engraver. So he sells things. He gets orders from people and sometimes bulk orders, sometimes individual orders. And he even told me, he said, sometimes it's just hard to get up and get started on projects. Things I know I have to do. And this guy's got even way more experience than I do. So this just helps you to understand that even the most skilled people have a hard time getting up and get going. So if you feel that way, don't don't cut yourself down. We all experience this. You just have to learn some strategies to pick yourself up, time block, reward yourself, set a deadline, and move forward. And I think once you actually complete the project, you you build this confidence going into your next project. But it doesn't mean that 
you don't have that same fear moving into your next project. Sometimes it's completely different. I mean, how often do we do the exact same project every single time? Not often. Each of my projects are unique. They're individual. Even if it's a furniture painting project that I'm doing or stripping something, it's a new project. I've never done that project multiple times. So we all experience it. It's okay. But you have to then decide how do you move yourself forward. So you should be seeing this deck build, I would say probably next week on my YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, go to youtube.com forward slash forward slash forward slash <laughs> sometimes my brain just I don't know I just have a brain fart in the middle of what I'm saying go to forward slash thrift diving subscribe you will see the video there probably next week and I'm not sure if I'm going to put it together with the other stuff that I've been doing because remember I had those clover mites I dug up a lot of the weeds that were surrounding my shed and I put mulch down. So there's just a bunch of stuff that I've been doing to the shed on the exterior. So I may put all of that stuff in one video. I'm not sure, but you will see a couple new videos next week. You have to come back next week too for next week's um, episode because I'm going to be having Laura Rudder back again next week. She's going to ask me some questions about thrift diving, how I got started, what was my first project, and all those fun things that I generally don't talk about. And if you want to hear about them, you got to come back again for that next episode. All right. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you next episode. Diving. Find it ugly, make it pretty. Mm. Paint a power tools, all right. Saving money with those thrift store vibes. Hey, yeah. thrift. Diving. Yeah.